All right, everybody, we are here to talk about something that's pretty important, I think. Um, gardening. Is that a shocker to anybody? Because it's not to me. But we're going to talk about how gardening changes your lifestyle and specifically how it's influenced us over the years. And maybe it's influenced you right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Gardening lifestyle. This is an interesting concept to me. I was, it it took me down memory lane about before I started gardening and then the changes that occurred. Have you thought about this at all? Of course I have. I know you have. Because you're more nostalgic than I am, so there it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I think I still, the memories are still current enough for me to, like, you know, the first probably 10 years of my garden, hmm, I have little to no pictures. Like, I have a handful of pictures here or there. There wasn't any documenting of my garden, and so I can only rely on, like, my memory for a lot of things. And it's still current enough to look back and say, okay, yeah, the first 10 years plus like basically four or five years of actually being online and capturing a bunch of things and I could piece the puzzle together. And of course I'm nostalgic about it all. I think um, I've lost track of like some of the, the strings of those first years and what drove me, you know, but I could definitely see when the shift began to kind of who I am now as a gardener, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, I can definitely see that. I mean, for me, it was the same, like, I never took a lot of pictures either. And then I did take a lot for Instagram and stuff like that. And then once I started doing a lot more YouTube stuff, I kind of backed off of it. But recently I went back and I was like, I need to find out when I did um, when I harvested my potatoes, so I was able to go back and see it. And it was invaluable to me about, you know, okay, this is when I could do it so I can kind of plan out. Mm-hmm. But there's other things that have kind of trickled into my life over the years based around gardening, you mm-hmm. know, um, based on the way my house is inside and outside. And it's interesting to kind of think about. And I look at other people's houses and yards and stuff like that. And you can clearly see the difference in a gardener's house versus a non-gardener's house. Just from the outside, apparently, obviously. But even like going inside, like people walk into my house and they're like, oh, wow, you got a lot going on here. I'm like, yeah, this mm-hmm, is uh, mm-hmm. this is food production 101 happening right in front of your eyes, people. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can see the surprise once someone walks inside the fence, you know, like inside of the yard. Yeah. Um, And that's just, you know, clearly the front yard, you know, then once you get to the backyard, um, it's always a mixture of like being impressed and like, wait, why? What are you going to do with this? You know, uh, it's still most of the people that come, it's based out on curiosity, not based on like, hey, I'm interested in doing the same kind of thing. I said most, not all, because there are definitely some people that are, uh, you know, kind of built the same way, if you will, um, that get it, you know, that I've um, visited my space. Um, So, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's because I can look back to for sure 10 years ago and what I'm doing now was not at all what my garden looked like then I can kind of get like how do you get go from planting a tomato plant to peppers and a cucumber plant to what you're doing now I yeah can, I can get kind of the shock and surprise of it all yeah and I mean you know most of I mean look obviously the outside of your house is going to change okay that's a no-brainer you've got to plant this stuff somewhere right So (laughs) for me, you know, some of the biggest changes occurred within my house in general. I mean, it's like right now. So I've been garden. So you've been gardening 10 years. No, no, no. I'm separating like the first 10 years. I've been gardening since 2008. Okay. Uh, So that whatever that math is, stop making me do math in public. 
Yeah. Uh, so, so the this, first from like 2008 to, I mean, I have some pictures like on Facebook or something like from when I was in, you know, going to get some lumber in 2011, you know, but it was almost like, here's my annual garden update. This is what happened this year, you know? Yeah. And then basically you have social media posts, what I may have in an old camera or something, you know, back then I wasn't kind of documenting life and like, you know, kind of like what a lot of us do now. Um, so if I fast forward from 2008 to maybe 2000 and probably 18, those first 10 years was kind of a state. And then the last four have been a different. Yeah. I think I've been gardening about the same amount of time. It's hard to say. I can't remember, but I remember how I was before I started gardening and I, I mean, it's not like I was a totally different person, but I definitely lived my life a little bit different. Um, I I wasn't, I wasn't as connected to things, I think, you know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. things didn't have, you know, um, this is going to sound, this is not how I want it to come out, but I'm just going to say it. The personality of nature wasn't really forefront in my mind. You know what I mean? Like I always cared Mm -hmm. about recycling. I always cared about that kind of stuff, but then like everything else is just kind of like, yeah, whatever. But then once I started doing it in my garden, it all kind of changed. You know what I mean? Um, my eyes were open, you know, Mm -hmm. and then my eyes, to food were really opened after that too, because this came in the time frame in which, um, we talked about this in a previous episode. I don't know if it's on Patreon or not. I can't remember now. But this came in a time frame when, like, the 2012 stuff was happening and everybody thought the end of the world was coming and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So, you know, my life started to change. I started to get more in tune with things. I was living in a different area. And um, I started to care more about the food production for my family. And that kind of opened it up. You know, I've said on the episodes before that, I mean, the first food my son ever ate was um, green beans that we canned. You know, those are the first things. And I'm going to tell you, that was a nerve wracking experience because I was like, please let me can them right. Please let me can them right. (laughs) But you had to take that chance, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, there was not any consciousness associated with, you know, kind of me breaking ground on my first garden. Right. Yeah. Um, it was something I did feel called to do though. You yeah. Know, I've told you this story around, like I see the space and I think I could have a garden here. I say that out loud, or at least I said it in my head for sure. And, and the importance of that is that I hadn't actively thought about gardening, hadn't even been watching anything. Like I was watching HDTV stuff cause I was looking at, you know, buying a house, but it was like, landscaping put flowers here it was not gardening you know food gardening stuff and so you know you get to 2008 and i'm you know digging up this first garden but there are a a bunch of years after that that again it was kind of like something that i knew brought me joy you know probably less about the food more about the um nurturing something you know like i was super excited when i got my first tomatoes and the, you know uh, oh this is what a homegrown cucumber tastes like yeah. right you know but i think if i fast forward a few more years and um, i became more conscious about my health right um um in 2011 2012 right you know, so that's when I was doing a bit more in fitness, kind of weekend warriors type, type stuff and trying to explore like what I wanted my diet to look like. And so the two still didn't meet. The, I, the gap wasn't, you know, I wasn't able to bridge the gap between me enjoying gardening and producing food, making food, growing food and my healthy lifestyle. It took me more years even still to get to that point where it's like. Well, yeah, (laughs) Yeah. because back then, if you think about 2011, 12, for me, I still was thinking about I garden from June ish to, you know, September, you know, so you definitely I mean, how much influence is that going to have over your 365 days of living and eating, you know, and so it took me some time. And as I started to expand my mind as it relates to, you know, styles of gardening, what I could really accomplish in my space for gardening, then the things started to come together, you know, um, do you think um, do you think that naturally people go through a period 
in which they start to look at their diet and try and figure out how they're going to do it. Or, I mean, I feel like I'm kind of jaded in that. So I don't feel, um, qualified to answer that question. But, you know, for me, there was a big calling about like, Hey, this is how we eat. This is what we need to do. And that's where, you know, a lot of the garden came in, but it wasn't really about like, it wasn't about like total food production. It was, and it still isn't, it's all about supplementing for us. Mm -hmm. But over the years, it's become more and more supplementation of our, our diet. I'm not sure because I think the only other people that I know about besides you and some other folks that I actually know. You mean I'm the only person you know? When it comes to gardening and kind of what their story or experience has been are people you see online that you don't have a connection with. But it's basically these are people that are telling what their story is. Yeah. But there's so many more gardeners. So a lot of the people that, you know, that stand out to me are people that talk about like some ailment some health ailment you know some issue some you know this idea that they are using food as a cure right you know them wanting to live a wholly different lifestyle but again i think that that's a percentage of gardeners but not the whole of gardeners so yeah. I, i'm not sure well, i'm just talking um, about people in general i'm not still not just sure gardeners. Okay. i mean what do you want to let me tell you i don't know well, I want you to have all the answers, Batavia. I look to you for all the answers in life. How many hours of recording? How many episodes? How many conversations? You don't want me to have the answer. Because then that means that you won't be able to come through and, and give the answer. I can't give this answer. I really don't know. But, you know, it was the same thing for us. We were kind of questioning that and growing the food. And I remember when we grew the food, there was a lot more connection to it. You know, you, you wait. And I, for some reason, eggplants really stick out in my head. I think it's just because they were so productive. But I remember watching and be like, is it time? Is it time? And every day I'd get home from work and be like, is it time? Is it time yet? Oh, my gosh, is it time? And then I'd go out to sea for like a week and I'd come back and be like, it's not time yet. Oh, it's ready. And then you would get it and it was like, yes. You know what I mean? Then the problem was, now what do I do with this? Because I don't, the only thing I eat is eggplant parmesan. Now, that first eggplant parmesan <laughs> I had was amazing. But then yeah. after that is where, like, my lifestyle really started to change because we were getting this food. And I mean, mind you, I only had one eggplant plant. That sounded weird. One eggplant plant. So even though we only had one, we were still, we got more eggplants in that one year than I've ever eaten in my whole life. <laughs> so, and I knew because of how I was before that I didn't want to waste it. And I wasn't composting at the time. I wasn't doing any of that stuff. I didn't have chickens. I didn't have really anything but just a garden. And the next, you know, so we started cooking more and finding more ways to use things. And I think that was a big lifestyle change for us and has really prevailed since then. We've started learning to cook way more foods with what we grow and using different vegetables in different ways, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's that connection you build with both nature and um, the food that we have because you spent that time working on it. You don't want to just throw it out. You know what I mean? It's wasteful. Yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. I don't know that we've had this conversation like personally. No, it's um, if you build it, they will come is what comes to mind. And the if you build it, if I build my garden out, then the thoughts like of kind of what's possible. Like I had to prove to myself that I could do it before I was able to make the connection yeah. between, you know, you could influence what you eat every day every day you can right you know yeah. i'm not there every day but still you could influence it so if i get go back to if i'm gardening in um if i'm gardening in d J july through october i mean i'm unreasonable like i know how much food i was producing then you know, I'm going to eat most of that during the summer, like when I take it off the vine. Yeah. And so, again, since that was what I was willing to do, that's what my garden looked like then. It was a pastime. It was something that I did in the summer. It's like you go to, you know, carnivals, you know, during the summer or you go to the farmer's market or, you know, during the fall, you go to, you know, uh, pumpkin patches and stuff like that. Like you do this during a particular time and then you move on from it. Yeah. That's what it was. Right. And so when I started to learn that there were other opportunities for me in the same house that I'm in now, right? 
then I started to say, well, huh, okay, well, maybe there's something there, there, right? You know, so my impact and influencing my kind of the things that I eat and consume, that was just done in the grocery store. Yeah. I was making, trying to make what I thought were more conscious decisions and choices with what I put in my cart. But it took me a long while before I realized that I had the power in my own garden. And so now the reverse happens. So now what I grow and how I grow and what I do, you know, my garden now further influences the things that I buy you know, in the store, if you will. Right. And you look at food differently when you go in the grocery store now. Yep. Yeah. You know, it's totally and, different. And it took me until I think the turning point was starting things from seed, more so direct sowing things from seed. Um, when I started to make the connection to nature. Right. Um I think before then I, I basically bought something that was, you know, pre-made, which I still buy, you know, transplants, but it was the, you're buying this plant, putting it into your garden and it just didn't click for me. But when I saw it like from seed to harvest and when I started to see different things that I hadn't even grown ever before from seed to harvest, yeah, that, I mean, if that, that was an aha moment for me for sure. Yeah. I'm not real sure. I mean, it's funny you bring that up because that was my next transition point. I don't know what brought me to want to start growing seeds, um, starting from seed. I don't, I don't know the path that took me down that, but I know in my last house that I had, um, we had this little, uh, basement. I don't even know. It wasn't really a basement. It was, I don't know what it was, but it was very small. Um, it's probably half the size of your average room, you know, um, whatever average room is. So that's not very helpful. But I remember setting up, like I started building out a place to put seeds and start them. And I had already, I had been growing bonsai for a few years, for a long time at this point, but I was really into tropicals. So I made like an indoor greenhouse, like way early on. And at some point I ended up adding seeds into it. And then that was another step because then it was like, okay, I have this place. It was all junked up. But I always like carved out a space inside my house. So this is the point in which the garden kind of moved inside a little bit. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. I started like growing it. And I spent a lot of time in this room that I would never go in ever (laughs) beforehand. And I would start, you know, monitoring these things and taking care of them. And then even when I lived up in um, Massachusetts, I think it was, what is it? It's like zone six up there, maybe even five. I remember... um, I just I remember thinking to myself like okay now instead of gardening for four four months now I'm gardening for six months like half mm-hmm. of the year I, I'm doing something and I, and I, it wasn't a technical process then it was I'm gonna get some pot and soil I'm gonna put it in, mm-hmm. in a yogurt cup and I saved all my yogurt cups and I put my seeds in them and <clears throat> if they grew they grew if they didn't they didn't like you know it wasn't a big deal but that was kind of like the start of the garden actually coming inside Mm -hmm. and me, Mm -hmm. you know, transferring into doing it for longer. So that was a big step too, but that changed my lifestyle because instead of going out and doing whatever the hell I wanted, Mm -hmm. I now had this responsibility to start looking after these seeds. Yeah. I think, um, when you look at kind of the responsibility you know, so if I go back again, June ish through September, maybe early October, um, based on the small things that I, were, I was growing, even if something died along the way because I was hanging out, you know, and and forgetting to water something that was planted outside, like it was kind of like, oh, it's too bad, but you kept moving, right? And so when you started expanding, you know, planting things earlier. You know, um, when I got the spark of, I could grow things later than September. Yeah. Um, when I started thinking about, okay, I'm, you know, not only am I sowing seeds in the garden based on how much I know I could, it's possible now. Like, um, and it's not even to say that I've really tapped into and maxed out kind of the wildest dreams in this even garden space. But what I realized, you know, how much more I could do in my garden and how much more garden space that I could create in my in my home, then you, that calendar started to stretch, right? You know, so it's not something that I would, you know, 
focus on I, I used to be outside in the spring for a good while before I even got into the garden of it all for that season yeah you know and now it's like I'm watching the snow melt like it doesn't even need to melt I have some video some picture somewhere where I'm digging up snow you know and um, that definitely takes a different commitment uh, because I mean you and I have talked about like the things you need to do before you go on vacation like I remember the first vacation I took in 2019 and I had an active garden this is when I expanded to the front yard and again this is I was still watering by hand then as I am now and I was uber nervous I was talking to my uncle like all right you promised to go over and check on things you know (laughs) it was like I put so much time and energy into it that year I hadn't started anything from seed indoors but I still had a lot of plants out there and um I mean, that's a significant change to how you move about. Something I do see with people that if I transition away from like the way I garden to the way that, um, you know, a lot of kind of almost farm like, you know, folks um, that you see online, you oftentimes hear them say and it's subtle, like they don't do a lot of travel, you know, they they spend a lot of the time, especially if they have animals, spend a lot of their time you know, wherever they live at their homestead. Um, and that's a life that they're, they've chosen. And I don't want that to be my life. I'm not ready for that. I don't know if I ever will be, right. but there definitely is a transition where I'm closer to that than I was when I gardened in 2008, you know? Well, it could be because you get more fulfilled with your own property or your, you know, what you're doing too. You know, it 20, 23 minutes when she got teary eyed. I think it was 23 minutes in when she got, okay. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Didn't make didn't make it to the twenty five minute mark. Okay, I go knew ahead. it was gonna happen. I knew it was, mm-hmm. that's the second time today. Um, yeah, it, I think you get more fulfilled. You know, you've got like, again, you you put more effort in to it. I mean, that's something that I dealt with too. I mean, I remember when I first really, and I mean, for me, I, I hope everybody understands. Like my bonsai and my garden. My bonsai was first, but my garden, you know, as an adult came very close to it. And I remember going out of town, but I got to figure out how to keep this watered. Mm -hmm. And so the same watering setup I do now, I did back then. I created my first one. I actually found my first homemade sprinkler the other day. Um, I'm going to revamp it and put it to use again. I'm pretty excited (laughs) about it. It's just kind of special, you know, Mm -hmm. but I remember being super panicked about it. And I remember I left and I went on my vacation or whatever and I came back and everything was fine. Actually, everything was better than fine. It had grown substantially since I left. And then that kind of put me down the path of like, all right, I need this thing to be a little bit more automated. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and that's why I, or I get my sprinkler timers and stuff like that from and not really having to worry about it as much. But I, I was like you, I don't want to be like, I don't care if I can't go away for like a solid month. That's not realistic but if i need to go somewhere for a weekend or even a week like if i go away for a week somebody's got to come check it but i definitely don't feel that draw as hard anymore to go travel um and i think it is because like when i'm here i'm more fulfilled at what i have and i can always step outside and look at it and say like hey this is something that i've i've built this Mm -hmm. you know i think that there's a lot of times people don't give themselves credit for what they've done you know, even if you have one garden bed or a container garden, like you've, you've made that, you know, and I think that's something really special that we need to consider. I, um, fulfillment is the word I wrote down, not, not in my notebook, but wrote down on this piece of paper that's in front of me. And I think that it's, it's such a great descriptor because I was fulfilled in that first garden in 2008. Like I, um, I got what I wanted to get out of that garden experience. Yeah. Right. And so my want, my need, my desire has changed over the years. And so um, sometimes I feel like I I should answer the question of the, well, why do you do all of this? And sometimes I feel like, you know, just just like anything else, I don't necessarily have to explain that to you. right? Right. You know, but I mean, I think a part of a simple answer is I enjoy it. Yeah. Right. You know, I get fulfillment out of it. I am definitely like once I'm in it, I'm pouring a lot into it. You know, I could look back and when I go back to those early years of like, wait a minute, I could run on the treadmill for two minutes. It was, I mean, 
you couldn't stop me after that. <laughs> like, yeah. like oh, the first time I ran to a six minute song nonstop stop on the treadmill, I was like Rocky. Like it was like I went up the stairs in Philly, you know. Yeah. And so and so I poured more and more into it, you know. And so I went from six minutes to a five k to a marathon, right? You know, to triathlons. Um, and that I spent a lot of weekends, a lot of weekdays, early mornings, late nights, you know, preparing for those. And don't listen now, folks. There was no like Olympic tryouts. You know, I was a back of the packer. So and I'm proud of it. But d- don't be out here thinking that, you know, I was out here breaking w- world records. Um, but I poured a lot into it. Right. And, and I look at it and it's very similar to gardening in that. Once I once I got hold of something that I really felt that fulfillment, I felt like I enjoy enjoyed it. It um, challenged me, right? I in turn poured more and more to it into it. Now the connection that I felt feel with gardening and growing food is very different. It probably seems obvious, but it's very different than, um, you know, fitness back then. It was definitely me chasing a thing that, you know, to push myself. This is much a much more whole feeling, right. you know, when it comes to, to what I'm doing in my garden space. And and I include not only my physical garden, but this is a part of my garden space, you yeah. know, sitting and talking with you, you know, making well, videos is a part of my garden space. Yeah, it definitely is. And that's something that has been later for me. But walking in, if, if I walk into somebody, like I have a friend and I go into their house and it's like, it's pristine all the time. It's like a museum. I'd be getting jealous. And then I come to my house and you walk in and it's got seed packets on the table. I've got, you know, peppers drying. I've got, you know, beans drying so I can shell them. I've got everything curing. I got my canner out. You know, it's like, you know, the inside of my house at at periods of the year become like a total workstation Mm -hmm. but the way that my family understands it is a big change and is i think is the biggest change of lifestyle for us because you know you can clearly see like if you're saving tomato seeds and you've got the cups of water sitting out or if you got you know it's like in this house we live in now for instance we don't have a heated basement area like we had So my seed starting shelf is in the middle of my house Mm -hmm. and it's a big part of it and it's always there. It doesn't move. It doesn't come down. And, you know, we use that area throughout the year, like we'll start seeds in it, but then we'll use it for drying stuff. We'll use it for drying seeds that we've saved, but then that overflows into the rest of the house. And it's a period like, especially right now, like right now it's like, but you embrace that. And when you look at that, like it's acceptable, you know, I was watching somebody's video the other day and he had all his sweet potatoes out curing. He had like 500 pounds of sweet potatoes out curing in his living room. And he's like, yeah, this is our curing area. This is where we do it, you know? And it just rang true to me that like, this is not just like, Oh, this isn't just me. This is a lot of people doing that. You know, I did that video about the peppers that I dry and we use it as decoration. Like Mm -hmm. you would have never done that stuff before. Like if you didn't have that stuff coming out of your garden or any reason for it, there's no way. But it becomes like a unique piece of you and your family and your lifestyle at that point. You know, I but I fought it. I did, too. I fought. I'm. I'm like this year. I'm finally saying enough. All right. I give. I surrender. Right. Um. Because there was again, if you go back to earlier years and what you were producing, you know, there was a spot on the counter where you bring in your haul, whatever that may be, a few beans, a couple of tomatoes. Right. Um. I I could think of back to maybe 2018 or something, and there's like a picture of like tomatoes on my windowsill. Like that was those are the tomatoes I had. Right. And I was just like you know marveling at them. But that's where but, it starts. Wait, that's where it starts. But that's not an interruption. Right. That window seal was clear before I put those tomatoes there. These last 2020 since 2020. So the last three garden seasons. 
boy, it has been like, you know, the uh, the good angel and the bad angel fighting each other. Yeah. Uh, my favorite time to, to see, I mean, I'm, I'm not an Uber, you know, like I, there's no pristine, there's no white glove test in my house you're going to do and I'm going to pass. Um, but when I leave for travel, I make sure to clean my house and just not stuff everything under the couch, but clean the house. And one of the best feelings is when I return home, right? And I walk in for the first time after any number of days of being away, in some cases weeks, I kind of see this space in a different light. My house ain't been like that since like 2018, 2019. <laughs> 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 uh, not not that one was month. back in the day, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Not not one month. I mean, there's a maybe a, a sweet spot like February, maybe February back in 2019 or something. Uh, um, and I say I I been fighting it because I felt like I could move about my everyday life. The only thing different I did was create like the the grow room. Yeah. Like a little space that I dedicated to where I was going to start seeds and then I have a table where I do that at. But it's isolated to that. All my other stuff is in the garage, it's outside, right? And then the first year that I had like a really big harvest started to come in. And when I say big, it's specific to me in my garden. And then I started to say, okay, what what I do here? How do I manage this stuff? And so I got through 2020. Last year was a struggle. This year was worse. Yeah. (laughs) And so I finally realized one system to schedule three. You really need to. And I have the space to carve out, maybe not the most convenient, but I have the space to carve out. Like you really need to just just like you organize your underwear drawer. Right. (laughs) You need to do that kind of thing for, you know, your garden because it has absolutely it hasn't even snuck into the house. It's come in like gangbusters. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's like, you, like you know, most people have a basket that they get their harvest in. Mm-hmm. You know, and when we go out picking, we have their basket. But when it's not there, it just sits out like a decoration, you know. And that's part of a lifestyle change that we had to kind of come into. Um, and all the vegetables being out and all that stuff. And I mean, it becomes accepted. But what I realize is when people come in... Um, I'm just I'm just going to say what the last person said when they came in and then I apologize if it offends anybody. Somebody came into the house and I'm like, "Oh shit, y'all ain't fucking around." <laughs> you know. And it's like, "No, I mean, this is this is what it takes, you know. This is what it takes to grow food and put it away and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, it, we for a long time and I haven't done it yet, but I promise you it's going to happen. We ran a dehydrator. And the dehydrator had to sit out and it was running all the time and it was that constant sound. You know, it's like right now I started another batch of compost tea on my back porch and now the windows are open because it's not hot anymore. And all I hear is it bubbling. But you just that's just part of it. You know, it's like my wife walks out and she's like, what kind of science projects you got going on now? <laughs> yeah. You, you know, it, before it would be like, what the hell's going on? But now it's just like, what is this? You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you tell, I tell her and she's like, OK, sounds good. You know, I'm like, well, does it bother you? Do you want me to move? And she's like, no, I kind of like it. You know, yeah, and those are the ch- those are the subtle changes that occur over time where it's like more accepting to have that stuff around. And it's more than just so the year that it worked, I had the uh, I still enjoy using the little picture cases uh, for my seed. So I felt like I had I was on top of ha- having my seeds organized. God, it made me want to gag thinking about that thing. I hate mine so much. Yeah. And I had um, a shelving unit, like the wire shelving unit, where I was able to manage like my harvest will go here. And even when I started to can later that year, I was able to like kind of balance all of that out, you know, and it felt like it was in I was in control of it, you know, it was orderly. Um, But it's all the other bits and pieces. I have a whole garbage bag where I've been collecting my neighbor's milk jugs for two years now and that garbage bag is in the, the basement you know because uh, I, I want to do the winter sewing I still haven't done it because I haven't gotten to year three yet um, but I'm collecting those jugs like where do you put your seed trays and you know like all that stuff it takes space right you know um, the and this is small but the books for your canning books and I'm like all of those bits and pieces these are absolutely new additions to my home and I finally realized this year that, 
you just can't say everything is going to be in chaos for you know now four months of the year no yeah. you got to find my grandmother used to say everything has a place if you put the thing back in its place you'll never have to look for it right and I mean, I still don't necessarily live that way. Yeah, not, not completely. But boy, oh boy, when you talk about this gardening stuff, um, it's been a significant change to just my everyday lifestyle, like every day of living. And I kind of need to, to put some respect on its name now when it comes to kind of getting things in order, if you will. Yeah. I remember getting home from, I remember leaving work and being, ex, and I mean, I still am excited, but like, I remember being like, I'm going to go look at work in the garden. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I can't wait to see what's going on out there right now. You know, I remember that. Was it escape? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was an escape. It was a total escape. And you get out there and, you know, uh, my wife would come outside and she'd be like, you know, she'd yell, dinner's ready. And you'd run in and eat dinner and be like, all right, well, I got a couple more things to finish. And you go back out there. And that's mm-hmm. a different lifestyle, too, because... And you can do this with anything. I mean, if you're into woodworking or anything, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to hesitate to say video games or anything because that's a little different. But like the, it, it's you're more active in what you're doing because you're out, you're moving around, you're mm-hmm. solving problems, you're mentally doing things. You know, I'm constantly looking stuff up, you know, even if it wasn't for the podcast, like everything would be the same. Mm-hmm. If I wasn't doing the podcast, like I'd be doing everything the exact same. Um, I would still be, you know, working out there and you're out there moving dirt and you're just getting dirty. And you, but there comes a point too. like, I remember I used to wear gardening gloves all the time and now I'd never put them on. I was watching, um, mm-hmm. I was previewing a video I did. I did my first fall garden, um, my first fall greenhouse tour video and mm-hmm. I held my hands up to the camera and I had dirt under my nails. And I was like, man, if you, if you just wore gloves, you wouldn't have that issue. But I just, I can't help it. You know, it's like, it's just become one of those things now where like it is what it is, you know, um, not being as pristine looking all the time. Not that I've ever been a very pristine looking individual. Look, I saw you light up. Don't even start cracking jokes on me. But like wearing work clothes and stuff like that was a different part of lifestyle too, you know, because you know, when I go out there, I'm fixing to get dirty, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's just kind of how it is. So at the same time, and these things, you know, are connected. When I expanded the garden in 2019, I also started Uh, working remotely like as a permanent nine to five right and um we used to go when i used to work downtown chicago it was business casual so i had work clothes right that's the only place i would wear them to work right and so a, a whole different you know set of clothes whether it's summer you know you have all the seasons here in chicago summer dresses for work and you know winter pants I, you know my work tights once that temperature drops in you know my long jeans all of that um and in 2019 as i started working from home you know i could have made the decision i guess to like continue to to i told you about this before i had a couple of folks i've worked with that continue to dress for work like that they need to do that for themselves. But I didn't right. do that. I, you know, again, I'm in shorts in a tank top, right. You know, on a work call or whatever. And as I look forward, I had this conversation this morning with one of my girlfriends. I sent two of them. We were part of a, a text chain, a uh, text chain. And I sent them a link to my favorite stretchy pants. <laughs> 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 I said, you know, it's been a rough couple of days you know this is my gift to you i'm getting ready for my monthly amazon order and these are my favorite i gave them the breakdown so anyone who wears stretchy pants they'll know some of the things that you want to look out for for stretchy pants and one of my girlfriends replied and said you know i have to be disciplined like i need to put on regular pants every at least a couple of times a week to keep me honest and i'm yeah. like i wish you'd have told me that three years ago yeah yeah because i'm it's too far gone now right and so Something as simple as like all of my clothes blend in together. They're all gardening clothes now. (laughs) Again, the things I wear day to day. And I used to try to get to the point of the season where it's like, all right, I can put on my sundresses. I'm done with the work work. And that worked for the first couple of years. Now. Yeah. Well, see, and now as my garden grows, I'm out there more and more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the other thing, too. I mean, I started with one bed. 
And I think I went from one bed to three beds, like very quickly and then containers. And then now I started here and I put one bed. Now I've got nine beds and a greenhouse and other areas and containers and stuff like that. So it takes up more and more of your time. Your farmer's tan. I told you about my discovery of how my hair, the sun, it changed like the, the ponytail portion of my hair. Cause that's the part that's normally out. You know, I normally have a bandana on, you know, oh, on yeah. my head, you know, and it's like, it took me months to realize all oh, your hair has changed colors because that's the part that's exposed to the sun the most as you're out there every day. And though, and I'm grateful for those bits, yeah. you know, like it's, it's a I charmed life as they yeah. used to say when it comes to, I can wear stretchy pants every day, you know? Uh, so don't get me wrong. I don't, that's not a complaint at all. Well, I wish I could really be comfortable in jeans once a week. And we're, we're going to work on that, right? <laughs> but for where we are now, if anyone is interested in my favorite stretch pants, you know, feel free to DM me. I'll send you the link. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, it absolutely is. I look at, I wouldn't have thought in 2022, if I go back 10 years, I wouldn't have described my life this way. Yeah. You know, I I'm very happy with it. But this wasn't like the way that things have kind of worked out, even if you kind of fold in some of the pandemic years, you know, you kind of think about that, you know, that first year for me, for sure, I didn't have to worry about kind of a, a small, small, small silver lining. I didn't have to worry about who's going to maintain my garden when I went on a summer vacation because I wasn't going on a summer vacation in 2020. Yeah. Right. You know? um, so anywho. Yeah. Stretchy pants. Stretchy pants. It's all about the stretchy pants. Not for me. I don't do it. Sorry. Um, no, Garden it, Crocs also. But go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have my, my, my running errands Crocs and my garden Crocs. But go. I don't have to worry about farmer's tins. My surfing takes care of that. But yeah, otherwise, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it, it is it's one of those things that your lifestyle, it definitely will change it to some extent. I mean, it's embracing the things that you do. And, yes, ma'am. No, go ahead. When you get done, I just want to make sure you don't go to move on to the, you know, food part okay. of this. Um, well, now that you've interrupted me, I don't know what I was going to say. So go ahead. <laughs> oh, well. I'm not sure how important of a thought it was if you lost it that quick. <laughs> Pot calling the kettle. Um, I was I was thinking about whether there's a bit of it that's, you know, the, the change in your lifestyle based on gardening, garden adjacent that you're not happy with, that you're not a fan of. Again, trying to keep it really real, right? Because a lot of what I've talked about, these are ch changes that maybe I didn't anticipate, but I embrace. Oh, what do I not embrace? Mm -hmm. I wish my house wasn't as messy as it is right now, but, you know, beyond that. I wish I didn't have that uh, photo container for my seeds. <laughs> <laughs> so just so y'all know, I'm not happy with it. It's um, it's not the actual container. It's me mm -hmm. and my methods. So I'm probably going to give it away to a patron at some point this winter when I find something new. Uh, it just it just doesn't work for me. Um, you know, I think for me, what I don't and what I don't enjoy for the lifestyle change would have to be the amount of second guessing that I do of mm. myself. I think there's a lot of that that goes on uh, and it happens every year and it's a tough one. You know, it's tough to deal with, but mm. other than that, like it's, it's the quest for the knowledge because, you know, for me, there's a little bit of pressure because I'm going to pass it down to my son. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked my wife not too long ago. I was like, look, if I drop dead tomorrow, would you still have the garden? She was like, no, probably not. And I was like, oh, well, that makes me very sad. So, you know, I would like for David, who is my son, he's eight years old, you know, to be interested in it. So I have that little bit of pressure. I was like, I want to teach him because I don't want him. I don't want to get deep, but I don't want him to live his life searching on the internet for stuff you know mm -hmm. there there's a point and i think you get to that and i mean i don't know correct me if i'm wrong if you're not there 
where you get to it and you're like, I know how to handle this situation. Mm -hmm, You know, there's less and less that you have to start looking up. I mean, I think I'll always be learning new things, but the amount of second guessing that comes with it is something that I don't enjoy because that does bleed into my lifestyle when I'm sitting around with my family and I'm like, wait, this happened in the garden. I need to figure out what it was. I need to figure out how to solve this problem. That's something that I don't enjoy as much sometimes. Yeah, I think for me, um, I, I'm, I sit in a comfortable space. So I experience what you've described, but there's a little bit more comfort in the, I kind of look at it as being cautious, right? Yeah. You know, um, and it doesn't always serve me well. So I also recognize that, but there is some comfort in like, you know, feeling like you're taking a beat, right? You know, and it's my also a protection mechanism where if things don't, don't really work out i've not gotten my hopes up again i I ain't trying to say it's a healthy way to live i'm just trying to tell you that's my truth right now um the bit that i probably interestingly enough one of the pieces i enjoy about it the most the bit that i would um look back and say gosh if i could could be managing that differently it is the sharing of my garden in a way that influences kind of the decisions I make in my garden, meaning I can still think about um, some yellow bell peppers last year that I saw they were beautiful. One plant was loaded with bell peppers, which is pretty rare in my experience. And I kept on saying, oh, I'm going to, I want to make sure I get a video. I'm going to do a a garden tour or something. And somehow the garden tour got pushed and pushed and pushed. And yellow bell peppers are the ones that go bad the first of all yeah. the bell peppers I grill, right? I'm sure there's some science behind that, but um and by the time I got to them, it was like, well, oh, and these two yellow pepper <laughs> bell peppers are, that are still on this plant. Um and so things like that, like wanting to capture the thing to share, right? But then delaying the thing that you would do if there was no camera around. That's the part that I'm still, you know, it's still a new content creator that I'm still balancing. And I think that that's the part that and this is all self inflicted. Um, that is probably the kind of downside of yeah. the change in my lifestyle. I can see that. I can see mm-hmm. that being an issue. That's a little bit different, though, but I, I do respect that. No, it absolutely is different. I'm just saying that yeah. I also experience what you're experiencing, but my answer to the question that I asked you is that. Yeah, I just look at it like this. Like, my garden comes first, and then after that, I can record whatever I need to record or talk about whatever I need to talk about. We talked about this two years ago and I say it and I live it for a week and then it's like, you know, you got, you got another year, you got another year, (laughs) (laughs) but you know, what does make me feel better about all of this is when you grow your food, you harvest it and then you come up with a banger recipe of the day. All right, everybody. So if you were able to go out and get you a mess of sweet potatoes from your garden or buy them, we are going to make a coconut pecan sweet potatoes. So Hmm. the ingredients start as this. A half a cup of pecans, a half a cup of coconut, a third a cup of sugar, um, a third cup of packed brown sugar, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, salt, a quarter cup of butter melted, four pounds of sweet potatoes, a half a cup of coconut extract, which I'd probably omit just to be honest, and then a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And Mm. you're going to combine all the ingredients in the melted butter in a bowl, place the potatoes in a uh, slow cooker, and you're going to sprinkle on the pecan mixture. So mm-hmm. cook it covered on low for four to four and a half hours. And then you can stir in the extract. So if you wanted to use a coconut extract in the vanilla, you stir that in at the end. And you have, I mean, honestly, it sounds like a dessert to me, but it sounds delicious. So how were the sweet potatoes cut? Uh, oh, I didn't say that. Uh, like you dice them like in mm-hmm. cubes. It's like a sweet potato casserole, so it has the yeah. crust. Yeah. You I know love what? If, it, if you want to be fancy, mm-hmm. it's a deconstructed 
sweet potato casserole. There it is. <coughs> Put it on top, chef, right there. That does make it fancy. It does, doesn't um, it? Four and a half hours at what temperature? Low in a slow cooker. Oh, okay, okay. I, Damn, I, did, were you listening? No, I blanked out at that part. Uh, obviously. But then I, I, I tuned back in at four hours. I'm like, good grief. Okay, all right, that makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> Put your oven to 450 and run it for four hours. And when you get up... <laughs> Go to the dentist because you're going to break your teeth off. I was sitting here like, uh, I mean, because I, I, it felt like this is going to be like candy yams, you know, because I yeah. thought it was going to be a mixture. But when you said, you know, the layer on top, but then you got to four hours. I'm like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> it's that but time of year, man. It is that time of year. And this is a good way too. if you're like me and you had a pitiful sweet potato harvest. Um, this is a good way to use it. too. If you had like a lot of small potatoes or something, uh-huh, uh-huh. it would be a good way to use it. And it. You don't have to use four pounds of sweet potatoes. You can cut them in half. So, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, you can half all the ingredients. I don't know how to half a third a cup, though. Uh, uh, There's a website that can tell you how to do that. Yeah. My wife does it by weight. I let her do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She's like, get the food scale. Yes, ma'am. But yeah, I I talked to my mom um, this morning and, and told her that I don't know if I got to two sweet potato pies, but. I, I figure. I think I've cracked the code. I think I know what I need to do. I told you this. I, knew, I know what I need to do next year to get to the goal of two sweet potato pies. Um, so, so yeah. If you do what we talked about, you'll get six sweet potato pies next year. I'm convinced. But I know I, it. I, I basically I'm underselling it to her. Uh, she doesn't need a whole sweet potato pie. She, a couple of slices would be fine for her. But I need to, again I'm tempering her expectations because this is like this is a third year that I've been talking about making two sweet potato pies and I've come up with zero sweet potato pies I mean, I, <laughs> I've had sweet potatoes That's but not enough mama. that I'd be uh, she hmm? brought you into this world and she can take you out she deserves a whole sweet potato pie oh she's not going to eat a whole sweet potato pie that's the whole doesn't thing doesn't matter she deserves to be given one because it's Batavia's mama she is I have she proof could freeze of it. it she could freeze it mm-hmm but there's that. That's the other thing that uh, is a lifestyle change is my freezers and my cabinets are totally different now than they used to be. Yeah. Huge, huge difference. I'm going to name my garden and it's just going to say, I'm going to put a plaque outside that says making grocery stores look like shit. That's what we're going <laughs> to do from now on. <laughs> Since 1990. Um, so as a housekeeping item and now you're going to basically go back and have to listen to see if you heard it. So I'm getting over a head cold something. And about 15 minutes ago, we were right in the groove of the episode. So I didn't want to break in with breaking news. I realized um, that I was breathing through my mouth and there's a good chance that some part of this episode. Oh, great. That, you're going to be huffing and puffing. Yeah. That, that sound in the background, that's just me trying to, you know, I'm fighting for my life here. <laughs> one breath at a time. You heard so, that, Leonard? Uh, I, Get I it apologize. under control. So, I hope that everybody's lifestyles has changed positively. Um, I'm sure there's something negative that's come out of it for everybody. And on that note, I would say this. Embrace it. Whatever it is, just embrace it and enjoy it. But... In the meantime, you know the usual places to check us out. Come join us on Patreon. We'd love to see you in our community garden. And everybody, stay safe and be strong and enjoy your gardens. See ya. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. If you guys want some Backyard Gardens gear, go to the link below and check out our t-shirts, mugs, pint glasses, and other gear. All purchases go towards helping to support the show, so thank you so much in advance, and we hope you enjoy. We want everybody to have a garden, and we're going to give you a chance to win free seeds every month. Head over to BackyardGardensTV.com and enter your email address to be entered in all of our giveaways. Good luck! 
We want you to be a part of our gardening community. DM us a picture of your garden at Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram, and we will share it with our listeners.